Hi, I'm Erin Brown with Homeschool Connections, and we're here today with Dr. Jean Ryu. Good to have you here. Thank you, Erin. It's nice and to be here. I'm really excited to hear about your courses. You've been with Homeschool Connections for quite some time yeah. and have a following, and, and people love what you do. So tell us about your courses. Okay, well, um, I teach in the philosophy department here at Benedictine College, and I'm the chair of the department. So it was natural when Homeschool Connections started uh, to be asked to teach some philosophy courses, which is what I do. Um, so one course I designed from the very outset is, well, it's designed for high schoolers. Typically, high schoolers will not take philosophy classes before they come to college. College is normally the place where one first encounters um, philosophy. But I thought, listen, we're dealing with homeschool students, students that are highly motivated, students that have had some training, perhaps in logic, which is presupposed to philosophy, or who have an interest in philosophy from great book studies or something like that. So uh, I, I developed a course called What Do Philosophers Do and How Do They Do It? Hmm. It is an introduction. So we read some selections from philosophers that have had an influence on society over the centuries, over the millennia. Um, we read Descartes' uh, famous, I think therefore I am, for example. We read Aquinas' Five Ways. We read Plato's Allegory of the Cave. These are things that pretty much anyone familiar with philosophy at all um, will have heard of. What I want the students to do is to actually read the text and see why these texts have become so important. Um, it also gives me a chance to trot out the range of methods that philosophers can use. So the how do they do it part of the course allows me to explain the difference between, you know, a proof, a demonstration in philosophy, or a rhetorical argument in philosophy, or an analogy or allegory like Plato uses often. Um, and those sorts of things get students accustomed to the idea that philosophy is not all just one thing, right? It's not just right. and a proof is the same thing. There are many ways to go about doing uh, philosophical questions. So that, that I guess you might say, is kind of a signature course for me. I've taught it maybe three or four times. Um, uh, and it's I know it, it, it's on the, uh, or it's in the list of recorded courses. And um, it sounds like a really key course for high school students. Well, especially if I know a lot of our homeschooling students go on to uh, college and university studies, um, and some of them will go on to studies at Catholic universities and colleges. And typically, philosophy is going to be part of what they're going to study there. Right. Um, even some, you know, some state universities uh, have requirements uh, in which include courses in philosophy. Okay. So, yeah, they probably will encounter, and I would argue should encounter some philosophy. So to have some exposure to it in the, I would say, junior and senior year of high school is probably a very good idea. I completely agree with you. And I'm thinking just in clear thinking in life, being able to look at even social media or oh gosh. interaction, right? Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Social media actually might turn you off of argumentation, uh, if you if you look at it too carefully, but to see how people go about misreasoning sometimes is as as valuable as to seeing how it ought to be done well. Absolutely, yeah. and so be, to be able to understand those fallacies in logic, but then take it the next step and understand where ancient philosophers uh, and people of wisdom have come, yeah. brought us ways to yeah. think about and process what's going on around us. Awesome. Sure. Yeah. Um, you would want to start with logic, for example, because if you left them there, um, especially if you did informal logic like fallacies, as you mentioned, yeah. if you leave them there, you don't give them good examples of where philosophers have really have really come out and avoided all those pitfalls, mm. uh, shining, right? Really uh, advancing our understanding of the truth, such as it can be, you know, gained by by human reason. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And this is a high school course, right? You have other. Very definitely. Well, yeah. so tell you us. have some, a certain amount of intellectual maturity. You definitely want to have your study skills in order, um, uh, methodical, uh, do the assignments, keep up with the reading. The reading is, is well above the average level for complexity, especially if you're reading texts in, um, you know, the, the actual primary text rather than someone's right. commentary on it. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's it's definitely I would say junior and senior year. Uh, maybe some sophomores would be able to do it. Awesome. Tell me a couple more titles. I know sure. you have a number of courses. A couple more titles of courses that you have here at Homeschool Connections, sure. either recording or live. Yeah. Uh, so all of my courses, I think, at least we're, we're working on um, getting Maureen and Walter and I have talked about it. And some of them were so early that the videos of them were unacceptable. So I had to redo those courses uh, so that the videos could be put on the in the recorded list. But the one I'm teaching currently is called Philosophy of God. Um, and it's a course I especially like to teach because, as I mentioned to you, too many people are cynical in our day of the ability of reason to arrive at the truth. Right. Um, so if you're going to educate someone uh, and you get to these sorts of questions, those who think that reason is going to fall short here and is going to come up with erroneous solutions, mm -hmm. it's good for them to take a course in philosophy of God because you can actually – see people who, though maybe very religious people, also make the case that reason can arrive at these things. And the average person could even independently come to an awareness of God, an awareness of the properties of God, uh, our relationship with God, all of those things, right, which we do almost naturally by faith, okay, have a rational support as well. So the famous arguments from St. Thomas, for example, in the Summa Theologiae, where he, he gives five arguments for the existence of God. He's not doing theology. He's doing philosophy. Yes. Um, so, you know, to, to give students a sense of how far philosophy can go or how far reason can go, I think is very important in our day and maybe even most especially for young Catholic people. It's too easy to fall back on the faith and say, ah, we have all the answers. Right. And then you are unable to engage with people who don't have the faith. Right. Philosophy provides that interface between faith and, let's say, science or, or atheism. Mm. These are critical for, for someone who's been a mom of kids sure. that are now adults. These mm -hmm. are critical courses. So if you're watching this right now, and I, I just encourage you to think about including a philosophy course. Jean and and what he's bringing with his courses. Um, tell us a little bit about more about your background. I know that you teach at Benedictine College. Sure, sure. Tell us more about that. What you bring to the table as an instructor? Okay. Well, I mean, I went to Thomas Aquinas College, so I graduated from there uh, with a bachelor's degree in liberal arts. So I have a good understanding of the place of the great books in a Catholic liberal education, um, how important they are. I use them all the time. Uh, one of the goals I have is to give students the capacity to read critically. Mm. So reading is one thing. Yes. I do it in grammar school, right? right. So reading, close reading of tough texts. Yes. Not simply casting your, your eyes over the page, right? So I encourage them to mark it up, to put you know comments in the margins, to distinguish between premises and conclusions to really grapple with the text. So, you know, that I got from my uh, training at Thomas Aquinas College. Um, then I went to the University of St. Thomas in Houston and got further trained, you know, familiar with the writings of Aquinas and Aristotle. Um, mm. So in terms of the kind of traditional uh, foundation for philosophy, such as the church sees it, I'm, I'm well-versed in those things. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not familiar with the contemporary and modern traditions as well, because a lot of what they are doing from Descartes on is reacting to the traditional philosophy you find from Aquinas back. Yes, that's through. right. So yeah, those though you know, so I'm I'm uh, I think I'm good at getting students to participate to uh, really grapple with the text, as I said, um, and to get some of the key notions out of these out of these courses. That's right. Um, that's right. So, I love the strong, strong background that you bring and the critical thinking emphasis that mm. you bring. It's just so amazing. Tell me about a little bit something about you and your family and your personal life. Give us a little window into what makes up who you are. Sure. Well, my wife and I both attended TAC, so we met there. Um, we have nine children, uh, live out in a rural community near Benedictine College. Uh, uh, we love living out in the country. Uh, the kids, I think, have have thrived out there. We've been homeschooling our kids for, let's see, it's probably been, goodness, over 30, well over 30 years. A long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. My wife um, 
from the beginning, my wife and I, mostly my my spouse, Maria, she developed our curriculum. Mm. Uh, uh, we paid close attention to tailoring our curriculum to the to the child, right? So one child, very, very good at mathematics. Okay, less math for you, <laughs> right? Or higher level math for you. And, and then we tried to make sure that our children came out well-educated. Um, so homeschooling has been a big part of our life. So again, it was natural for me when Maureen and Walter started this to um, to kind of come right in and say, hey, come on over. you guys, uh, I, my own children uh, uh, you know, have been homeschooled and are now going, many of them came to Benedictine and, and that was a good connection. And but, I know parents watching this are going to like that and enjoy that connection that you have too, to know that yeah. you've been homeschooling for a very long time yeah. and understand the ins and outs and the how to's. And I know you bring that to the classes that you teach. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. So I can I can watch the chat, for example, as I teach and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll look at the series of comments that students are making, which allows me often, often to anticipate exactly what the student has in mind. Because I'll say, oh, Seton based maybe something here or something like that. There, maybe, you know, <laughs> other divine grace, you know, it comes up again. So right. I'm, I'm familiar with the kind of, uh, you might say, local customs mm -hmm. of homeschooling Catholic homeschooling traditions. Yes. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun just to recognize people and get it right too. Ah, you're a mother <laughs> person, aren't you? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, your your courses are recorded and live, so for yep. those watching right now, uh, you can look on the homeschoolconnections.com website. Right down the front, you'll see links for the live catalog and for the recorded catalog. They're two separate catalogs, and you can look up. Dr. Jean Ryu here. You'll see the spelling that is here oh, on the, the page and, or on the picture. And check out the courses that would exactly fit. I really highly encourage you to think about philosophy and what that can do just for rounding out your high school students' understandings and preparation for college or beyond, even if a student's not going to college, to have the ability to think critically and think through and understand the foundations for the ways that we think. Um, thank you for being here. Well, and if there's, if there's a parent who wants to get in touch with you personally about a course or has questions about maybe whether a course fits perfectly for their student, what's a great way for them to reach out to you. I would I would go ahead and try to contact me here at the college. So that would be jryu at benedictin.edu. That would be the fastest way to do it. Awesome. Well, thank you again. It's been great to chat with Thanks, you. Thanks, Aaron. I, I really enjoyed it.